Hi, welcome back to the Jansen Art Studio. I'm David Jansen, and we're going to be painting here. I've just done a little sketch. I've kind of got my perspective here on this. I had to sketch this with a pencil, a little vase. I'm going to ch probably change it a little bit. What's a little vase, little flowers? We're just going to paint a little, uh, like a little uh, setup of a, um, a still life, a floral still life for you. So as we haven't done this too much. I'm going to paint this kind of quick. I'll show you a nice casual way. We'll run through some of the concepts that are necessary in painting something like this. So I have this, my background, this is again just a, a panel, a nice practice panel, MDF panel that I just base coated with some medium white. And I'm going to be doing, of course, the Paint It Simply concepts with uh, some of my uh, uh, six colors of the Paint It Simply, which is the white, the red violet, the naphthol red light, which is warm, a cool red violet, warm naphthol red light, Hansi yellow, uh, blue, and black. And I have been adding lately some of the uh, pine green, because some of our students and teachers like to have a medium green in there, so I've added that in, and uh, uh, just as a nice intermediate, but you can make it with Hansa, a little bit of black, a little bit of blue, or, or you can uh, use the shortcut pine green, okay? Okay, so let's go on and, and let's just put in, we're gonna, the first thing that you're gonna have to do in any kind of uh, setup of this, and one thing that I tell my students to do, it seems kind of crazy, but it's like you're gonna say, okay, here comes my path of light is gonna come through my painting. So I establish where my, my path of light is going to go into a painting back and through the back. And so then you'll know where the light is going to come through and come through like this. So then you'll know through light and you know where everything is going to be. So let's make a nice soft, um, let's gonna make a kind of a violety and some yellow, uh, bit of prime, uh, uh, complementary colors here. Um, and some black and some white and some a nice grayish kind of tone here because uh, we want to make a, a, a painting here that uh, we can um, show you some of the concepts that we'll use. So we'll have kind of this grayish tone here and I'm going to just leave this lightly into the background like this. We're going to lighten it up back up in here. This is where my light source is going to come into play so I'm going to lighten it up but it will um, also still be a little bit darker back here so we'll just push this tone in here okay and we'll let it come back down a little bit darker back down here okay and even a little bit cooler because the lights coming through here its shadow side will be down through here okay so I wanted to always do one like this with you so you can run through the thought processes of what it takes through here. So I'm going to have light coming through here, up and through and back up into here. This is going to be through light into the composition back up here. Back here, if you decide to have a table line or something right in here, uh, you can put that in. But back in through here is where the color will come a little bit more towards the... Um, the back part and then this will be the cool part back up over in here as it's the shadow through so it won't have through light through here this will have the shadow coming through on this side and then the light will come back up warm it back up again right back up in here here will come your light through in here and so bang will come the light and then it'll move through and then slowly go to the back, back in here like this, moving back through. And we can vignette some of this a little bit, which would make this kind of fun. So we can pull some of this back like this and vignette it a little bit so we can get some interest and everything like that. And we'll put some other colors in, but I just want you to see this first. We'll come back up over this side here. This will be basically a, a shadow side back up over here. The Dutch and, and the Italians and all the painters, uh, especially after the 16th and the 17th century, started to do what they call chiaroscuro, with the light and dark of the painting. So they would set it up through here, so the through light would come through like this, then there would be the darker part of the painting, would be the dark side here, so my light side to my dark side, and we'll set that up through here and we'll know the light will pass through right through here and 
this little light will come through and back like that. Now you can, you know, put something up like this and you can decide to have your container as glass. If you're going to decide to have your container as glass, of course, you'll, you know, you paint it uh, like this and, you know, your table line and you move these colors through and then your container really uh, is is becomes the uh, the background you know color through it so there's a lot of little things and I'll have all kinds of videos for you in the future here on on painting glass and everything but we're not gonna paint glass we're gonna make this a container of color so one of the things I want to do here first is to really set my light into my painting here and I really like to do that I like to just set a, a quick little light here through the painting move this through Move it through, move this, move this angle through your light like this. And you feel that pow and that movement of that light right there. You want to just move that through here like that. Okay. And of course our our back express light back through here. Now let's go in and we'll start to add some other colors in through here as well. Splash some stuff around. Let's splash some of our greens around. We know we're going to want to have some flowers in here, so we'll splash some greens right around and in through here. And this will all change. This is just some splashing of some color through here. We know we'll want some darker contrasting greens in through here. And we'll splash those around. Those darker colors. See that darker color will really pull some of this in there. Let's... um really since we're gonna have greens and we'll have some pinky reds and stuff let's take some of that color and let's also just use those to neutralize ourselves a gray and there's beautiful neutralized grays as well um, and one thing that you think about in your background is should, your background should harmonize with everything so as an artist don't be afraid to take a color like this and start to add some of this color this nice neutralized green red here and start adding that into your painting like this. Look at how pretty that starts to have, that pretty color start to come out into your painting here now with this, as this goes into some of this background that we have, some of these other colors, and you start to see those colors into this painting. Isn't that pretty? Just a quick little sketch of this. We'll get some of this color out through here. That's just pretty, those colors. Just beautiful, working those colors in there. Let's uh, let's decide on a, a nice color for our container. Um, let's take maybe a uh, nice, well, well, if you don't know, and it's kind of hard to see, what am I deciding on? Do I want to have blues and reds and stuff? Let's just skip that container for a second. And we know we want to have some... Um, some reddish kind of colors into some flowers. I wanted to make like some, like a reddish rose kind of color right here, a rose, maybe another rose right in here, like right in here, this area here. And I'll keep this just real soft right now because I'm not real sure exactly what I'm going to do with those flowers here. I have my plan that I want to do a couple of roses in this bud vase here in this vase and I want this vase to be a color and but I'm not real sure exactly um, you know what what I'm going to do as far as the flowers and stuff yet let's do a little uh, that red and let's go to a little purpley maybe color flowers smaller ones here blue or purpley here so we'll put some out there maybe a few smaller ones out through here like that that's kind of pretty. And uh, we'll set some more greens in there as well. Nice, thick color. So see, I, I'm, I'm just setting up some of the things that you will see here in the painting. Let's take a little bit of those purples and greenish kinds of colors and let's take those right out into our grays, right? Be the artist, travel those colors through your painting here. And the artist will travel those colors. Let's just move those colors out and through your painting here. Okay, that's good. And we'll just travel some of that right up into our background and right out there like that. Alrighty, now I'm gonna go to like a uh, T 
10 here, an old tin to do some of my painting. I'm going to take some of these colors that I have right down through here, and let's just kind of toss them all together here. And let's see the let's see the nice toned kind of pinkish kind of container color we can make here out of that. And so usually, like you know, if I'm starting up a container like this, and I, I know I want to do my container, but I'm not really too sure about what color I might want to do my container here, or uh, you know how much I want to paint into it, or so. Is so I'll start it more with a neutral and then like this, and then we'll take it slowly over to a color. Here we go. We'll make sure we get our perspective here down and get this little ellipse down here, down on the foot of it here. Now it doesn't have to be perfect yet, and you don't want to get too perfect too quick like this. You want to leave it, and I do want to widen that out just a bit here. Just have to make sure that you were widening it out equally on both sides here. And that's fine. Um, I can take a little bit of my black, a little bit of my like my red violet, nice cool dark color here, and we can just shoot in a little bit of the idea of where the cast shadow is going to be from this, and down underneath it, just real quick, a contact shadow. We even add a little greenish kind of color to that so it's not pure quite so dark uh, of a color here and we'll pull that through and we'll just soften that out so just like that so we'll give a little a quick little indication of that we can take some of that color let's just push that right back here and just push some of that in that that will come all the way into the back of the painting, right back up over here. That might come into the shadow area of the painting, which we will say is going to be right down in here, as well as a nice light and dark area of the painting here. Just like that. Okay. It's a fun little coloring in here. Okay. And a little bit right in there, just. Now we'll, we'll come in also, we can take some of that color, that red violet and that black kind of color there, it's kind of pretty. Let's come in and let's set a, dark, a little bit darker color tone right down in here. As to the shadow side of that container. And my light source here is going to be coming in at this angle here, which means it's going to hit right along in here. So we'll just quickly put in a nice dark, it'll be really dark right up in here underneath our composition, and especially up onto this right side, which will be down to the shadow side, right down to there. Okay, And then of course it'll get lighter as we go down. Now let's take a, uh, since we're having those reddish ones there, let's go with the um, a real um, kind of a light, almost pinkish kind of color for the front part of this container here. We'll go some pinks and we'll put some yellows and whites and stuff into it. Let's come down to this side here of the container here. Up to that side, right up into that shadow. And we'll just work these together. Short, choppy strokes working that together. There, pull some of that across. And so I'm setting up basically what is called into the painting, the light and dark of the painting here, okay? And uh, this will give me a good view of where my light is, my darks, uh, roundness to the objects and stuff. So the first step is to come through and set up the, the light and the dark. And most important is the darks. So I'm gonna have um, like a rose right in here. So I'm going to want to set up a little bit of the shadows and stuff that you would see here onto that rose. Here on that, we'll set up this other one that's going to be right in here. Right in there like that. Maybe a bit of the reddish tone that we're going to see into those flowers as well. Here. Okay. 
check these out. Come in there. We'll set up like there's going to be the bowl of this rose right there. These may petals may pull down like that. And we'll soften some of those back out here. So come back out to those edges there. That's good. Let's get our green here and some black and a little bit of our red violet. We want to make sure we get those nice dark, even though we've hit it a couple times, you want to make sure you get those nice dark statements in there into that center of interest for those. Well, that's going to be in here onto your shadow side. This is the shadow side of the leaves here. So let's get some of these dark statements of these coming down this way. Right down there. Okay. You will have it a little bit lighter. So we'll take a little bit of our, uh, let's just shove this right up to the top up here a bit. Shove that up out of the way. And let's take some pine green and a little bit of the yellow, Hansi yellow here. And let's set up a lighter side. You will definitely have some lighter green coming through and coming through back here into these areas right in there. Okay. And right here like that. There we go. Right down like this. Okay. And some touches of that right in here. There, like that. Nice. Okay. And uh, so now you've got an area of your light and then the area of dark. And we've got to cast, we've got to make sure that we see our through light coming through. So now let's go back and redefine our, our light areas here. So we're going to put some splashes of some lighter green. We have the darks in there too, but we want some splashes of some lighter green coming right through here, right through here, right down to this area here, okay? So that's going to be your light coming through here. Then we'll drop down to our container here, and we'll let this uh, go even a little bit more, kind of a little yellow, a little warmer into that. And that container light will be right here. We'll, we'll come up right through here. Remember we said it's going to come up right through here and there. But the container light that you're going to put in here is going to follow the shape of this of this uh, container a little bit. So it's going to come down and come out a little bit like that. And then it's going to go side to side. And this is kind of a good way to do it. Just take your finger and go side to side like that. Put the light in and that starts some of that movement of your little container there. And then we'll put in the express light source. If it's up to here, this little guy bends out like here. So if the light source is slightly from the top, it's really going to hit it right there at that particular angle like that. So sometimes it's good, even though it's a little soon, but it's good to just strike it like that so you know where that's going to go. And then it's going to round down slightly like this and down into that area there. And then your light will pick right back up in here and come out so out this way here. So it's going to come in just like that and then up and around. And now it's just a matter, let's take a little half tone, a little pink into that. And let's just work this out like that. Work this out like this on this side here. Work that across like that. There we go. Just like that. Okay, let's build this up a little bit here. Build this out like that. Put that around there like that. We build that light again. We build this light several times. We'll soften that. Maybe a little bit of a half tone strike there. A little bit of a pinky tone, half tone. Half tone is this on this particular one is halfway between the shadow and that light. So that's like halfway between the, the shadow color and the light color here. We'll use that to soften some of that. We'll build that. Now, some artists paint these very, very quickly, these little touches like this. They'll paint them very fast, and some artists will, you know, um, 
paint it slower. And so we want to do a, a more kind of right in between the two. I don't, you know, I want to show you a real fast setup of a floral here, but we don't want to spend a tremendous amount of time on this one. We, our goal is to come through the uh, setups of it here to show you the setups of a painting like this here and how to paint a painting like this pretty quickly and pretty fast here. So we want to leave some of this really choppy. So here comes your light sources through. And we'll pull through a little bit there like that. And uh, down the sides here pull through through there like that and that's pretty good sometimes it's good to take a, a big brush and move that through uh, sometimes you can take your finger and kind of move that through now when I get a lot of paint like this it wants to uh, blend really easy and I don't want to blend that too much so Sometimes what I'll do is I will, I'm going to put on a little bit of an edge of the light here, just a bit here, right down into this area here. I want to put just a little more light. And then what I'm going to do is let this tack up a bit. It's going to take about 10, 15 minutes to get a little bit sticky before I come in and start to, uh, you know, do any kind of blending or anything like that. I'll let it get a little sticky and then it'll soften a lot easier. I'm going to take a little bit of my uh, red, violet, and red, but the red, violet, and a little bit of the naphtha red light, more of a medium tone right between those two tones there. And it's called, always working what we call a half tone and soften right through those here. But you can see I pick up some of that light pretty easy and I don't want to do that too many times. There, it'll, that just makes it uh, want to carry, and, and if I work it too many times, it'll come flat. So, you know, that's a danger of it. But we can, over onto this side, there'll be a, a little bit of what we call a reflected light, which will come from the table hitting this side of it. And it's always a cool light, so we'll take a, our cool red-violet, and I'm going to add a little bit of white to that. And it's going to be a cool light that's going to sit right here. And in normal, normally what it won't do is it won't pass the apex, which is right here of that. So it's going to stay down low, right down in here, and then just fade off. Sometimes artists push it beyond that to uh, up a little bit higher so we can, we might even put a little bit like right up in here. And we'll do that. You may not actually see it in a real thing, but we'll do that as an artistic statement. But generally it's it's reflected light from an object sitting next to it so it's going to be like right in here would be the reflected light it would never be as light as as the um, highlight itself and it'll be cool so the red violet is just a perfect little one for that right in there so we'll drop some of that and we can drop that little bit of that cool right down here as well just kind of work those colors together and i want this to then tack up a bit and we'll go work on the flowers where this starts to tack up a bit get a bit sticky so we can do some more fun things with it here there we go let's set a nice little one more nice little dose of light right in there you can see each time you do that then come back and set that dose of light right in there it works really nice that light just works nice in there Let's uh, just come back through. Let's take a little bit of that and, and even some of those reds and stuff out of our brush and just get very artistic here. Just move this through. Let some of this color come through like that and sketchy. And that's what makes it pretty. Get this sketchy light through here like that. We can get a little bit of yellow into that. Get a little bit of that warmth coming through there like that. Okay. There we go, just like that. And through, let that pull right up here to the front. So we get that good movement here. That good sense of, of a light direction in that. Here, just pulling your eye in that way, see? 
that's what you want this a little bit of that movement in here like that so it pulls your eye in towards that little container there and then we'll put some extra chunky stuff on there like that okay we'll soften that up there just a bit so we'll get that get that nice movement in there now we'll let that tack up for a second let's go up and paint some of these roses here we'll come right in here let's take our reds and our white here we know we don't want to mix too much this is my cool so I'll, I'll model into that a little bit and let's just set up a real simple little bowl of the rose let's come over here to this one and set up a bowl of the rose the front rounding part of the bowl here and just set some strokes here that's going to be the bowl of the rose, the back of the rose, out there like that. Okay. We'll just move some of this green in and out like that. Move and lose those edges a bit. That'll allow us to make nice, soft, pretty little roses. Here. Okay, like that. There we go. And uh, time for a clean paper towel. Take some of that red always remember to move some of that color down and let's just add a little touches of that into our container here that's what makes it really pretty those containers and everything so pretty try not to get in there we got to let that tack up a bit there Dave okay so let's come back in and let's get a little more of our red and our whites here and uh, Come up and put the edges to these roses in here. Here, like that. Get, kind of swirl those around a bit here. And we want that nice light. This is going to be our through light right through here. So that's going to be our nice light through there. And we'll just kind of push that around a bit. And I like my colors really thick so I can push them around without them. If they're too thin, you push them around, they all become one color. And I don't like that. And that just means your colors are too thin. So, or, you know, you, you need to use the thicker paint. If they come together too quick, you need to use thicker paint and, uh, or let it really tack up a little bit so it uh, doesn't join together quite as quickly. Okay. Alrighty, so let's grab some of that and let's give just an idea of little petals here. So just some ideas of little petals here on this rose. Here. Just quick little petals. We want to keep this rose very light. And so just short little choppy movements like this, very casual and understated, just a fun little rose. So we don't want to get too stiff with it or perfect with it. Just keep it light and airy like that. Little tiny corner of the light can do so much into like, little tiny corner of light can do so much to help you suggest shapes and petals and things going on here into the center of the rose you know so we don't we don't want to uh, get too much going on there and uh, get some of that red and that red violet together such a pretty color here that red and red violet beautiful deep 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 red and we set our shadow side of our rose here like that so we have a nice light side and shadow side so some of this shadow side will come into the back back here there that rose let's come over and work this other one here we're going to have our shadowy side to the rose right down there okay we'll have a little bit more brighter red right in here beautiful red I love that red let's get some of that red right back up into the front of this one here it's a beautiful red right in there there and you can
can, you know, I, I use a lot of techniques where I, when I paint like this, where I push and pull the colors um, and I try to strike them at all different angles and picking up paint and laying the paint on and then I can lift some of the paint off and um, as I as I try to find the shape that I want this rose to have, I want this rose to be rounding like this. I don't want it to be too much, too much going on as far as the petals and stuff to stay a little softer. So I'm, I'm just kind of stroking it and building it here. And at some point, if you do too much, you've got to uh, just let it tack up a bit because you get too much paint on there and it's and it starts to get too thin and you need it to tack up just a bit so you can come back in and and lay on some thick color and reshape the rose a little bit but here I'll look for its bowl that's its bowl right there to maintain it so I can maintain its bowl here and then uh, a little bit of the light up into the front. Now here is going to be the front light part of that rose here. So it's going to come around here. These are going to be the rose petals here coming around. There and there. We'll have a little bit of light. Model that in a bit here. And then it's going to go right back up over to its dark side over here back like that so we might have uh, a little bit more light like right in here on this rose here a little bit of that light if you know see I'm just topping into the color and I'm just going to build it right on there like that a little bit more of that light right in here and we might take it kind of formal where they're just about touching each other there. So I got a good tracking of light coming right up through this rose right in there. Good track of light right in there like that and that. Okay. And uh, let's come down. Just let that sit down like that. Let this just kind of We'll use this and just put that light there and then we'll let this just kind of fall down like that here and let the light so the light you'll see the light coming up like that that's what I'm thinking is I'm following the light as I'm building this here that'll be the big front of the rose here so I'm thinking light I'm thinking where's the light hitting it and shaping this front of the rose here with some light and that'll come right up into here as well to shape this part of the rose right there with the light. There we go. And uh, I can soften something out with a little half tone or if I get a little too much of it there. I can put a little more edge here. Out like that pretty and a little bit more of a red in there and again I've used a lot of paint now so I'll give it just a few minutes for this to tack up a bit so I can uh, come in and do a few more things but I might want to just say here's the nice edge to that rose before I leave it here we'll just make sure we say a nice edge um, There we go. And you can always lift off, lift off some to help say that as well there. Okay, so now we have those those colors in there and we were gonna add kind of a purpley little color. Here, so take a little blue and some red violet, mostly red violet here. And we had some of that bluish color there, so let's just add a few little uh, purpley kind of flowers coming out through here. I'll just use the corner of this brush and roll and create some different little shapes of it there. 
and I want to create a few little of those right down here as well. Love that nice cool little color there um, that we can um, create a few little guys right out through there like that just a bit of them. Let's take a little light into that. Okay, and we'll add some little touches. Just a little light right into some of that color with a little bit of that blue in there. It's pretty little coloring in there. Little coloring into those. Very, very cool. We might want to hit just a few little here and, and you can just use your finger to soften some of that out we don't want to you know you want to sneak up on all of this you don't want to get in there and, and get too much going on right away so you want to sneak up on some of this so just get some of those colors through there nice movement of that we might uh, you know add some smaller little touches in there let's get in and uh, restate some of our greens here back in get some of our greens down here little green leaves and stuff out here from this this one here they can get, just get moved out and around here little green touches here touches there just they just those little touches like that just using your brush like that just really lighten and airy up the the painting here I just use a little chisel and stuff around and move stuff around they just kind of lighten and airy up the the design here um you can use some black with that green and a little red by a little blue nice cool dark and you do a little negative painting or a little shadowing painting here we have that nice deep core shadow that's going to come right in there and right in there touch that out just a bit down to this side there like that so you can see how this whole painting building it's building building that's what we're doing so I'm coming through answering a few more little questions a little flowers here I'm answering a few more little dark touches right down in there like that some more dark touches right down in there okay and uh We'll take, let's just add a little bit of movement in there. You can push in and out with some of that green to uh, right in here, like back here, to create those soft edges. Move those greens and flowers together there like this. So that rose back here gets very soft back in here. Same thing over here. Push those dark greens and reds together there. So it gets very soft, and you will lose the edge right out through here. We'll lose the edge on some of this. Here, these colors just lose this edge just a bit. Make sure your fingers are clean. Okay, that's good. Through there, and uh, we'll take some of our nice yellowy green here. We'll get a nice yellow green here spark up our center of interest greens here there we go like right down through there here i'm going to take some of this more of this violety color just toss that right in there get some more of that going a little bit more light of that going in here because it's right into our path of light this one would be coming right in here and towards our path of light. So 
we'll touch a little bit of that then you let it just kind of fade away so here it is by our path of light and then it's just kind of fading out here coming out this side going down and around this side we'll let that hit the path of light there just right there as well right there so we'll say path of light right here a little blue and color that hits the path of light right there okay let's get back up over to our yellow green let's hit that path of light right in there yellow green we'll get a little white into this which will tone it down calm it down just a bit so we've got a little bit of white white is a toner it lightens it but it also tones it so we know that so it doesn't make it quite as bright but it does make it light so you still get a contrast to it now some people I hear for years you know they'll say oh add some white to brighten it up well no it lightens it up white lightens a color but light white is made up of all it's reflecting all colors back okay so in your spectrum of light white was reflecting all colors back okay that's why you wear white t-shirts and stuff into the summertime you're cooler because it's the the color rays that are actually heating you up during the summer so you put on a light shirt and you're cooler put on a dark shirt black doesn't black absorbs all of the color bands and so that makes, makes you feel hot and so white absor uh, white reflects it back so it's reflecting back all color and when you reflect back all color it's becoming toned okay it's becoming lighter now sometimes you can take a real dark intense color and you add white to it like for example you take a thalo blue and you add white to it it looks like it's making it brighter it's not it's just making it easier to see how bright that that blue really truly is but it's not making it brighter it's actually making it more toned so we know as a as an artist that light white addition of white will make it nice and light but it will also make it a little bit more toned color so i'm just going to get some green movement in here like there's some leaves and stuff going on back in here we can even get a little more purpley color back in here purpley blue color which would be pretty take some of this and just model that into that blue and get some of these just little touches of that you know back in here like this is just all stuff good stuff little flowers and stuff going on there and that's all you really need there you don't need a tremendous amount now we'll get some extra little light here we could add a little vein I just said, uh, an idea of a little vein line there if you want to add that into that okay so it's how much you're going to you know this is just supposed to be a little color setup painting on how to do something like this fairly quickly so we don't want to get all wrapped up into it too much we can take some of that little bit of green though we can reflect a little bit of that down into our container which is a good thing to do and also it's a good thing to take some of those colors you know be the artist move those colors through your painting here take some of those and just toss those out into your ground around like that into the painting that's very artistic thing to do just move that around here grab those grab those grab some of that pink and let's move some of that pink back up into that grab some of that pink and let's just make a quick statement of some of that in there you know there's a statement of that pink there boom right in there like that that looks great okay now let's go back down this should be tacking up a little bit see how it's tacking up a little bit okay as that's tacking up a little bit we can go down now so let's revisit that front part of that container here and see now I can put some more light back in here I can start watching my container for its lights its movement its light it's dark here I can drag some of this across here and if you build and build and build here and you get start getting too much of that again just let it tack up okay that's all it takes is let it tack up so you can come back in and play with it again work it again let's work its light let's work that edge of that light back down again right down through here okay so we'll work that way and this way work that around 
here. Walk that right up into our light there. There we go. We'll uh, drop a little bit of that nice gray color into our brush. So we can just soften that ever so little. There. Those pretty colors. Here. Pretty grays. Leave a little bit of that pink there, but not too much. You get too much, it'll start looking like a rainbow. So I want to get some of that light in there and work that around. But I want to take some of that out. Here's a little bit too rainbowy. Here. And, you know, Sergeant always said, and, and it's a good thing, and I'm going to switch up to my big brush here. He always says, make statements with as large a brush as possible. It gives you the best movement here. And I, I like to do that. I like to make those statements with, uh, these statements here with a pretty good sized brush here. There we go. Just like that. So you can see it makes that, makes that statement pretty nice here. And just gets a, a real pretty, see this, I come in here like this, and I, if I just go like that, that just gives a real pretty swirl type to that container there. That I, I want to try to capture that swirl, that swirl of, of, of the shape here of that container there. up there up there like that we'll just kind of swirl that down there like that pull that through a little bit of that light on that container there on that edge there like that we'll just grab and pull through just a bit and it takes some um, you know several times of pulling it here pushing and pulling the color till you kind of find the the movement that you like and I'm kind of starting to really like that movement there that that's getting to it and that's working kind of nice with the painting. But again, you can just take your, your brush here and let me just get rid of some of this extra here. And uh, you can work it that way, but I'm gonna pull it this way, I think, because I like that kind of movement. There. I like that little bit there. Look, put a little bit of reflected light back up on that edge there, which is really kind of a nice little color, just boom, boom, right there like that. And that edge there, a little bit pulling down there. Just real, real casual cut touch there. And let's just grab a little bit of that, that, that color, and let's just add it right into our rose or flower right out here, just a bit right down into here that'll take that color and um, you know you're the artist you're looking to also keep that harmony and that movement to your flowers containers and everything here so just add little touches of that through use that bit there that's good and um, yeah now we'll uh, build this front up I want a little bit more movement of my light through here. Just swirl that through. Lots of heavy duty white right in here. That's what I want to pull through the painting here. And uh, push that color in and out. Here, move that in and out here a bit. Push that back. 
We want that light movement around. We want to splash that light around. Take that around like this and let it just kind of splash around. So you got a good feeling of the light here. Just kind of. Move these colors and it takes a lot of paint and that's what I'm doing right now and and, and it's one thing that I, any really great artist is going to tell you it takes a lot of paint and to make beautiful paintings it takes a lot of paint so I ended up getting a lot of paint and working these areas here several times building and building and building the paint till it's real thick right up into this area like right up in here because that is what really gives it its interest, its its life and its interest here. Okay, so there's that paint that you put on there. This nice little creamy colored vase here. Push that light down a bit, right in there. Let's give it its Final little bits of shine here. There, like that. Let's uh, round its bottom here, part, find its ellipse here, like that. We'll go back to its red, violet, and black, that nice deep contact shadow line here. Let's drop that in and then right up underneath the fa the foot here, just a bit, underneath that. And we'll work this out a bit because the value of it has to change a bit. We'll lighten it up, change that a bit. It gets, the, the shadow gets lighter as it gets further out. It's just in near the contact area there. So that's good right in there gives me a nice little cast shadow back through there like that so we'll just let that happen back through there you can have some bits of light coming through little bits uh, things that we like to add as painters or like to take a little model uh, like a little red and we like to put out like little you know um, petals and stuff that have dropped off of these little guys here uh, some little bits of green back through there are also very nice to to drop in or little stem lines and stuff and just little things we like to add we take a little bit of a the dark as a contact as a little as a, a quick little little touch of that into that as a little shadow and then I'll soften it back a bit. There we go, just a little. There, like that. Just little bits of that going around. And uh, let's go right back up towards the front here again. And uh, just put those little a little bit of that movement sometimes a little bit of that I love to have a little bit of that bright yellow warmth right up in here into that front and uh, you know so you really pick up that sunshine right in there and it's you know you don't want to create rainbows of color but this just has lots of stuff here not rainbows of color but just lots of stuff you know, worms and stuff going on here. Going through like that. And this is where I really like to leave it, you know, really uh, modelly like that. And some people like to smooth it out. I like to leave it really modelly. And of course, there's all different kinds of paintings I do, but that's what I generally like to do. I'm going to push some of this red aside here just a bit to get to a nice light warm pinky red. You could even have a little bit of yellow into this. And we'll come back in one last time and set our nice light 
here to our, our rows. Here, like that. A nice light here to this one. so that they get their nice lights there there right up here in the front a very light light one right up here into the front got that and then you have a let's take a little bit of that nice little pinky color Let's just go into the container a bit with that. Tack a little bit of that container with that. There, that's a pretty color. There, like that. down and follow your light check your light that's going good right up there like that just check your light make sure it's doing exactly what you want it to do reflected light back up through there light right up to there I could have a little maybe express touch of the light right there where the light would you know, I've got the I look a little bit of the look of a second foot here so I'll just accentuate that right there with a little touch of the light right there and so that light picks up there that light picks up there nice heavy thick color right there like that and I think that is probably enough anything more it's just a fun little painting of a couple of little flowers and that going through there and that works fast little setup looking through the light putting your light direction through, finding your shadows, building it back and forth, lots and lots and lots of paint. Hope you enjoy it. This is a, just a real quick run through of this. These are fun to do because it makes you, in a small painting, run through some of the things that you're going to do in a larger painting, of course, with more time and more care, okay? But it uh, they create fun little paintings anyway. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you on some of the other videos. Give it a try. Change the rose color too. Change the container color. Give it a try. Do it again, again, and again until you get that mechanism down. Okay? I'll see you on the other videos. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.